Over the centuries, Wentworth Woodhouse has had a huge impact on the local area and the gardens have been particularly important to the health and well-being of the community, not least during the recent COVID pandemic. And since this began in 2019, over 31,000 people have visited our gardens. And our exploration into the history of these beautiful places has also been quite a journey. The famous landscape architect Humphrey Repton was commissioned in 1790 to redesign the 17th century kitchen and ornamental gardens at the Palladian East Front of Wentworth Woodhouse. He created a vast landscape of rolling parklands, a landscape which today looks much as Repton had envisioned with grazing deer and cattle, though we can no longer boast the buffaloes that once used to roam here. The more modest west front of the house looks out onto gardens and pleasure grounds that have seen many changes over the years. Little is known about the earliest design of the 16th century garden. The first image we have of the gardens is from 1728, which shows woodland, an extensive ornamental and formal garden. This included a maze, four stone obelisks, which were moved to adorn the Rockingham Monument in 1793, and possibly a bowling green. Note the wide, straight, central path running from the house, which is still a defining feature of today's garden. Astonishingly, this early garden featured a hundred foot high hill with a winding path and a summer house at the top, from which visitors could admire the formal knot gardens and a skittle garden. A menagerie in the gardens is first mentioned in 1737, but it was during the 19th century that it seems to have been at its height. It housed 25 species of mammals from all over the world. Among them was an American brown bear housed in a bear pit, a tiger cat, camel, kangaroo, llamas from Chile, ocelot and antelope, and aviaries housed 61 exotic species of birds captured from all corners of the globe. This was a sight which may have been enjoyed by the young fifth Earl Fitzwilliam. The menagerie was huge, running from the Camellia House to the Ionic Temple and out to the current Wentworth Garden Centre car park. The current Camellia House itself was built around 1812 to a design by Charles Watson, extending the site of an earlier greenhouse built in 1738. Camellias were at the height of fashion as the luxury flower of the 19th century. Today, the Camellia House still has 19 spectacular specimens, over 200 years old. And we are delighted that both this and the historic tea pavilion behind it are now under renovation. The domed Ionic temple built from 1735 features Hercules dressed in the skin of the Nemean lion battling with a mythical beast. And other features of the historic garden still seen today include the South Terrace, 450 metres long with retaining wall, an ideal space for exercise and viewing the landscape, and the Ice House, and must in stately homes for keeping food fresh for endless banquets. In 1902, when the seventh Earl Fitzwilliam and Countess Maud, who was a keen gardener, took over the estate, the garden began to take on a whole new look. She was responsible for the development of the Rose Garden and the Japanese Garden. And there was also an orchid house, two botanical gardens, and an area known as Countess Maud's Garden. This was entered by a gate with the words come into the garden mode, spelt out in horseshoes. A whole estate of stunning glass houses was built from 1908. One, 220 feet long and 20 feet wide, housed an array of exotic plants, including bird of paradise, amaryllis, hydrangeas and orchids, all used for floral displays in the house. A vinery producing grapes extended to 88 feet, and in another 14 glass houses, more exotic plants and fruits were grown, including nectarines, peaches, pineapples, bananas, plums and lemons for the banquets and dinners at the house. During the first half of the 20th century, the Fitzwilliam family were keen to open up the gardens and facilities for the enjoyment of the wider community and for charity fundraising events. Access for employees and families of the estate and the local pits gave opportunities for fresh air, exercise and well-being, an important part of the Fitzwilliam commitment to its community. 
And this is a commitment the Wentworth Woodhouse Preservation Trust works hard to continue today. Highlights in the early 20th century included a garden party in 1915 for 1,500 guests to raise funds for officers' widows and orphans. The christening and 21st birthday of Peter, who became 8th Earl, were attended by hundreds of employees and their families. And an annual show enabling estate workers to showcase their skills and produce was a regular event from 1918 to 1937. Throughout the World War II years, events raised funds for wartime charities, and in 1945, more than 10,000 miners and their families spent a joyous day here, celebrating VE Day. So we've seen the gardens here at Wentworth Woodhouse in their glory days. But at the end of the Second World War, devastation struck. In 1946, with the country running seriously short of coal, Manny Shinwell, Minister of Fuel and Power, stated that private property must be used for the benefit of the nation. He turned his sights here to Wentworth Woodhouse and decided that 20 acres of garden and 90 acres of parkland were to be ripped up for open cast mining. Even though the coal was known to be of poor quality and an assurance was given that it could be extracted by less destructive means, Manny Shinwell was not for changing his decision. In April, Peter, now the 8th Earl Fitzwilliam, travelled to London to plead with the Prime Minister, Clement Attlee. Even the threat of industrial action by Joseph Hall, the president of the Yorkshire Miners Association, did not stop the bulldozers from moving in. And by the time Peter had returned from his meeting with the PM, excavators had broken through the boundary walls and were ploughing up rose trees and rhododendrons. The park and gardens at Wentworth Woodhouse were to become the biggest open cast mining site in Britain. Although the grounds were roughly landscaped to disguise the devastation once mining ceased, there followed decades of neglect. In 1976, Wentworth Garden Centre took over the area of the Wall Garden, and over the next 40 years, extensive restoration took place. But it wasn't until Clifford Newbold bought the property in 1999 for £1.5 million that the gardens here were given a whole new lease of life. Head gardener Scott Jameson was appointed in 2004 and worked closely with Mr Newbold in planning the rejuvenation of the gardens. Plants and shrubs were purchased from specialist nurseries throughout the country, including a £12,000 collection of rhododendrons to complement those that had escaped the mining, some of which are over 100 years old. There are now over a thousand rhododendrons in the garden. Aces were a particular favourite, providing rich autumn as well as summer colour. The orchard in front of the Camellia House was planted when Mr Newbold and his family were in residence. It is made up of various Old English varieties of fruiting trees. Creation of the summer border was a massive project which started in 2005, extending over 100 feet in length and edged by French yews, it is now a mature feature of the landscape. A riot of summer colour, it's the focal point for visitors throughout the season. The plans and aspirations for the garden are extensive, but none of them loses sight of the historical and horticultural value of the landscape of Wentworth Woodhouse. Recently, red shale paths have been relayed following the historic 19th century paths to emphasise the woodland borders, which will be filled with hostas and spring bulbs. Some of the trees, like the yews and the hollies, are well over 100 years old, and there are eight Yorkshire champion trees, recognised trees of merit, all of which need tending. Over the years, lightning has struck some of the tallest trees. When you visit, you'll see the veteran sweet chestnut on the corner near the beehives. Wounded yet majestic, this tree is home to kestrels and bats and a natural habitat to untold creatures. The care lavished on it will ensure it is still standing in years to come. The sheer vastness of the landscape is the hardest job of all to manage, but under Scott's direction, three teams of enthusiastic volunteers continue to restore the gardens. Wentworth Woodhouse Preservation Trust is building on Mr Newbold's legacy. We're working with nature as our priority. No chemicals are used in the garden, and a recent ecology report has found over 250 species of flora and fauna here in the meadow. 
we welcome a great variety of birds and wildlife, from bees in the summer border to the wasps and blackbirds who invade and steal the fruit from the orchard, and even the squirrels who eat our plant labels. The Trust is proud to have been able to welcome visitors over the past three challenging years and to provide a safe haven of fresh air, well-being and tranquillity. And our future plans and ambitions will provide accessible and welcoming spaces for years to come, just as the Fitzwilliam family did for generations in the past. So come, learn and explore and share the history and splendour of a garden that neither man nor machinery could destroy.